morning, Michelle and your viewers. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we actually dispute the figures uh, as expressed uh, in our view or even proven could be you know, far from being accurate. On one basis that uh, the registration or confirmation of records of COVID deaths, it's uh, within the registration form, there's no space for COVID-19. The only space available is that defines like upper respiratory infection, which then makes it a discretion of a doctor who is on site to, to, to declare whether COVID or not. And in some instances, most people, some people die in homes without even reaching the hospital, without being declared by anyone. So the figures are far from low. This can be confirmed uh, really the report by independence, independent newspaper in, in the UK explains Swaziland is now on, on, on rate, is among the top 30 countries of high deaths on rate. It is has surpassed South Africa. With South Africa, it's around 9.5, and Swaziland is already up to 9% of deaths uh, happening per million population. So it means by rate, South Africa, Swaziland, it's higher than South Africa as per population of yeah. a million yeah. uh, estimates. Yeah. In terms of COVID-19 testing, how is the kingdom managing testing? Uh, is it testing widely? There have been available free testing facilities, but within the period of Inguala, every system was shifted to the venue of Inguala, making people to move from as far out to the country, stretched from Lavumisa, everywhere along the country to come to Lutzitini, where Mswati was hosting his ritual ceremony, where I think that is where everything went on, because people had to come and assemble at that point. Even though initially the very same testing system was inadequate, but it matters right away was when then it was centralized into the area because for him, the ambition was to get an audience. He wanted more people to come. But unfortunately, in this case, his thinking was subjected only to that, ignoring that this was now a center of further uh, infection, further contamination, contaction by many people who would have been exempted in one or another if that was not the case. So it has been taking place, but it's not necessarily adequate. Even now, the practical tests that are taking place within hospital, they are now only relying on temperature tests. And some, some more practical contacts or possible uh, uh, infected people could necessarily take back the virus home. And that's why we believe that squarely it is on him because the spread is about how he has created, how he has structured the system without any other pressure but for ambitions to contain his power and maintain his, his dictatorship at the expense of the people's life for that matter. And now at, with a huge cost. That's why we say he's responsible in all aspects. Let's talk about the king uh, who has apparently refused, according to the Communist Party, to declare a national disaster, instead extending the state of emergency. In terms of the kind of response a national disaster would unlock in terms of the kinds of resources that would then be made available to the population. How are these two things different in the kingdom? For the regime, they meant one thing. Actually, from the initial phase of the lockdown or of the spread of COVID, the conditions of the national disaster was simultaneously switched in to connect with the oppression, with the repression, with to sustain the, the dictatorship, because there was no the conditions of the of, of, of the lockdown simply to him or to the regime meant that it would guarantee and, uh, and and consolidate repression. In what way? In the sense that the freedom of expressions, which never existed in the country since the decree 1973, were all sustained. Equally, also the freedom of expression, nurses and everyone who was trying to participate in contribution to how best to deal with this issue were all closed down. And uh, for the worst part then, it only also helped the regime to sustain a life of free dictatorship in that there was no one who would question not only issues related to the COVID, but generally all issues affecting the people of Swaziland. 
like you will recall that the health system was already in, 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 in crisis and nurses and all health workers and other people were involved in health, including communities were already standing up to demand because there were lack of bases, including Panado and other conditions that were there and they were exposing most of the nurses and health workers into danger. Then in this case, their most important interest was to keep the population checked other than to lock down and support the development of a better condition to cap up the disease or control the spread of the disease. Mm. It never happened. If it, has, it has been the case, he would have also thought equally that on the second wave, it was dangerous to assemble people under Ingoala in his ritual ceremony. But for that reason, because it was now his event, he thought it was free to do. So it is in that nutshell that you could see that this lack of understanding, lack of agreement on the status of the situation by the regime, by the leadership, which is so ambitious on the retaining his power at the expense of the people. Even now, with the outcry, he still remains silent. He's saying nothing. There are no caps, there are no changes. There are no restructuring that are taking place to respond to this, desert, to this situation. Now that is there, including hiding information, not to allow the expression of information that the situation is there in the country. And without us standing up and expressing that, there is no way that this thing will happen. That's why I'm calling for the AU, which is responsible now as part of the UN to coordinate the African program of the care back and the disease to intervene in this situation because it is so dire and the condition will and are already leading into a very disastrous situation, which may be equivalent to mass murder, as we say. And so I think we think squarely put it against on the situation on him that he is responsible. Kenneth, you're asking the AU to intervene in the handling of the pandemic in the kingdom. Does the AU have a good record of being able to turn things around in the kingdom when they are, as you're saying, facing possible mass murder there in terms of a lack of, a lack of action being taken by the kingdom? We think it is their opportunity now to correct their past failures to respond to the situation in Swaziland. I think because now the condition will be actually worse off than it was within the HIV situation. We believe then that it is now their opportunity to act. They've never acted. They've always kept a blind line on the development of the country outside when despite the outcries. But we are saying we are still continuing to make this outcry to say this is a condition that needs punitive action unless it will hype up our population. And we are saying it will be to the interest of the AU if it is the resp on its responsibility, but also that it is now in the, it has got the common structure on the COVID fight. It, it gives them more opportunity not to be seen in any way interfering, but to be intervening in a situation that is dying in our country. We are saying it is their opportunity now. They've never helped, they've never, they've always ignored our situation. But we call them now that it is an, an opportunity of time to try to lend a hand and support the people of Swaziland if they still respect their position and their mandate as being representative of the populace of the country, not to keep in friendship with just the ruling elite. Mm. Kenneth Kunene is General Secretary of the Communist Party of Swaziland, joining us there from a video link in Mpumalanga. Kenneth, thanks very much for your time.